Oracle is at the heart of many customers' applications that they rely on to run smoothly and perform flawlessly for their day-to-day -day operations. The speed of the transactions is critical, but that speed is dependent on many things. The speed of the CPU, memory, the elegance of the query, the structure of the tables, and eventually the speed of the disk drive that the data is stored on. Here we have a view into an Oracle environment on two servers. The servers are the same, they are both attached to a Clarion array, but the disk storage they are attached to is quite different. One is running on standard fiber channel disk drives, and the other is running on enterprise flash drives, or EFDs. EFDs are a game-changing technology with ultra-high speed performance and ultra-low response times. We're using both Orion and Swingbench load generation tools. Orion is a standalone tool for predicting I.O. performance for storage subsystems. I execute the Orion script on each of the two servers to begin driving the load on some of the devices. The other tool we're using is Swingbench. Swingbench enables a load to be generated and the transactions and response times to be charted graphically. To establish a communication between the tool and the Oracle database, the first Swingbench user has already been connected. Now the remaining users for the Swingbench benchmark are connected so a proper load can be placed on the server. We increase the user count to 30. In this environment, it was found that increasing the user count to above 30 created no noticeable impact. While the Swingbench tool begins to ramp up, let's take a closer look at the IOSTAT windows at the top of the screen. The first device listed represents the device on the Clarion Array hosting the activity generated by the Swingbench test. For the server attached to the fiber channel drives, it's EMC Power D. And the server attached to the EFDs, it's EMC Power R. The remaining three EMC Power devices are the ones that are used by the Orion application load generator. Let's take a look at what the IOSTAT windows are actually telling us. The reads per second for the fiber channel disk drives is right around 400, whereas on the EFDs, it's about 2,900. That's a throughput difference of approximately seven times more reads per second for the EFD implementation. The writes per second are around 80 for the fiber channel drives and around 600 for the EFD drives. That's a difference of eight times more. The average wait time is where the real benefit begins to show. Average wait time is the average time that each I.O. request took to complete. This includes the time that the request was waiting in the queue and the time the request took to be serviced by the device. Notice that the average wait time for the EFD swing, swing bench device runs around 3 to 4 milliseconds, while the average wait time for the fiber channel device is over 45 milliseconds. The same disparity is seen for the Orion LUNs. The EFD devices are showing around 1.3 milliseconds, while the fiber devices are varying from about 42 to 75 milliseconds. That's significant. The percent utilization is the final field to look at. This field is a representation of the percentage of resources available for the transfer of IOs that are actually being consumed on the server. The host that's attached to the fiber channel drives is pegged at 100%. There are no more resources left on the server to drive more I.O. due to the wait times to complete each request. The fiber channel system has completely maxed out on its resources trying to service requests to the overburdened I.O. subsystem caused by the backlog of I.O. requests. On the EFD attached server, it hovers around 95 to 96%. If this server had a more powerful CPU, it would be pushing even more I.O. A look at the Swingbench windows show that the EFD implementation can complete 22,000 transactions per minute, while the fiber channel implementation can only complete in the neighborhood of around 3,000. The performance impact and benefit of EFDs are plainly obvious. The surprise is that there's an also a potential decrease of TCO to the overall environment. By allowing the server to process significantly more I.O. at the same CPU cost, there's the ability to get more mileage from existing infrastructures. These improvements occur without having to engage expensive consultants to tune applications or the time and effort and disruption that would be associated with a lengthy redesign of a poorly performing Oracle application. To accelerate your Oracle performance and start realizing the impact and savings of EFDs today, contact your local EMC sales rep, technical consultant, or EMC partner.